Peace and love, y'all. This is YC Timothy here with another episode of Life in the Moment. And today we wrap up the four-part series in manhood. We're going to look at what it means to be unapologetically masculine. And it's important that we understand that the term masculine is not a social construct. It simply means male. Whereas if we look at race, and a lot of times people try to compare the two, if we look at what uh, race means in the different races, those things are social constructs. But being masculine or being feminine is not a social construct. It's a matter of fact. It's a matter of being. And so um, it's important to understand that the masculine means male and that because God created us, he has every right to dictate and determine and define, amen, what it means to be male, what it means to be a man, and what it means to be masculine. And so we'll see that in the word today. So starting at Genesis, let's just dive, dive right into it. Genesis chapter 2, now I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Genesis chapter 2, starting at verse 15. So the Lord God took the man he had made and settled him in the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely, unconditionally, eat the fruit from every tree of the garden, but only from the tree of the knowledge or recognition of good and evil you shall not eat. Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of disobedience. Now, this is important that we un unpack these verses here because we can see what it looks like or what it means to be a man from the onset, from the onset of manhood. So the Lord took the man, going back to verse, verse 15, so the Lord took the man he had made, right, and settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate it. The reason that I can tie in the purpose of a man or I can point uh, from the word of God and point to what manhood is is because God created man and so the one who creates a thing is responsible for assigning that thing its purpose and so when God said or when God did something in regards to mankind in this in this uh, situation or in, in, in this case rather he settled him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and to keep it that was part of his purpose that was part of his destiny. That was part of what it meant to be a man, was cultivating and keeping or doing some form of work. And the Lord God commanded the man. So then after he gave him the job, he gave him instructions on what to do. And more specifically, he gave him a directive on what to do. You may freely, unconditionally eat the fruit from every tree of the garden, but only from the tree of the knowledge or the recognition of good and evil, you shall not eat. Otherwise, on the day that you eat from it, you shall most certainly die because of your disobedience. So the Lord was explaining to mankind that when you disobey uh, me, you separate yourself from me. That's the essence of death. It's not the cessation of mortal life, but it is separation from God, you see separation from God verse 18 now the Lord said it is not good or beneficial for the man to be alone I will make him a helper one who balances him a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him God decides that you know what I created man to be in fellowship with me and he's in fellowship with me I'm guiding him I'm leading him I'm teaching him. I'm instructing him, amen, on how to navigate, right, on how to navigate this terra firma, on, on, on how, to, uh, how to exist in this space that I have created for him. And so I have all the, yet because I've created him and my image, it's something about him that wants a relationship that I have to him. He wants to have a relationship to something else that is like him, you see? So it's that God to man relationship, but God recognizes that, you know what? Just like I have man, um, I have a relationship with mankind, 
mankind needs to have a relationship with another that is like him. Not another that's not like him in terms of the uh, species, but another that is like him. And so we see, now the Lord said that it's not beneficial, verse 18, it's not beneficial, um, not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. Or in, in uh, other words, one that is like him, that can enhance his purpose, more specifically, that can enhance him in his purpose. You see, let's, let's continue reading. Verse 20, Genesis chapter two, skip down to verse 20. And the man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper that was suitable, a companion for him. There wasn't a suitable companion for Adam, for the man. So the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made fashion formed into a woman and he brought her and presented her to the man. Now, this is very important because um, it, 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 it reads that, that uh, in verse 22, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made fashion a form. It literally, it, lit it literally means built. It literally means built. So he built God, built. Amen. Praise God for the built woman. <laughs> Amen. Right? He took that rib and built Adam a woman, or built the man uh, a woman from that rib. And he brought her and presented her to the man. Then Adam said, look at this, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That is beautiful. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. This is me. This is me, but it's not me. Amen. It's a part of me. It's a part of me, but it's not me. Why? Because this person was built to complement, amen? This person was built to uh, 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 to be suitable, a counterpart, amen? A counterpart. Do you know the thing about a counterpart? If we know anything about gears, right, or cogs, um, gears have to have counterparts in order to function and to function properly. If there's no counterpart there, then, and there's no connection right in order for there to be a connection there has to be a space and then there has to be a filler and so what the lord said when he saw man he's like man there's some spaces in adam that need to be filled socially um maybe emotionally maybe physically right there's some spaces that need to be filled i'm going to create him a counterpart that will fill those spaces that's that's compatible you have to be compatible just because something can fill a space doesn't mean that it's designed to fill that space it has to be compatible and so it's beautiful because god brings the woman to adam and adam is like man now now i have someone who's compatible amen and brothers, it's, it's okay. It is masculine, amen, to look for someone and expect to find someone who is compatible, amen, to find the woman who God has created who is compatible to you. For this reason, a man shall leave, verse 24, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother <clears throat> and shall be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife, look at this, verse 25, and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed or embarrassed. You see, when they came together, part of being masculine as it relates to your woman, to your wife, part of being masculine is being vulnerable. Amen. You can be naked. You can be naked before her. And naked doesn't necessarily mean just without clothes. 
although in this case it does but it means just showing yourself being yourself you have to be amen <clears throat> you have to be willing to be around or to be yourself um, around this person who God has created to be your counterpart you have to be the real you a amen so that she can fit and function you know like those gears in the cars right you have to you have to show her who you are behind the walls right and without and without apology like it, 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 it there's no, we've been we've been so conditioned to be that if anything is masculine it has to be hard it has to be rigid it has to be tough and in certain cases some of that's true but that's not always the case that's not always the case um and we'll uh, continue to to uh, read and see but part of being masculine is being vulnerable but it's being vulnerable at the right times with the right person right we don't walk around just being just being vulnerable because this world is fallen this world will take advantage of you and your vulnerability but there are times brother where you have to be vulnerable and you need to be vulnerable and the two people who you should be um, or, or the the two relationships uh, rather where vulnerability should be okay one is always with God it's always okay to be vulnerable with God and ideally relationship number two it should be with your woman being vulnerable with her and sister you have to create a safe space for him I'm, I'm not going to get that because I'm talking to the masculine today I'm not talking to the feminine specifically but it's it's much easier for a brother to be vulnerable if the sister has created a safe space and if she is moving in her purpose which is to support which is to uh to compliment amen him to serve as a uh, complimentary uh, person in that person's life when something complements a thing it enhances that thing and so to enhance that brother's purpose it has to be something about you that complements what he's doing and not just compliment in terms of, of words saying kind words but um, if he's doing X you you bring Y to the table amen if he's doing A you bring B to the table amen that's what that talks about but let's 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 continue reading because again I'm talking to the talking to talking to talking to the brothers today but brothers with that when you are choosing the woman when you're selecting the woman make sure you select someone who compliments you in your purpose one of the things you have to do is figure out what your purpose is <laughs> right because you don't want to uh, find someone who 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 doesn't who doesn't compliment you they, they might have um, they might have a strong skill set in certain areas but if y'all are both strong in that space then y'all don't really compliment each other y'all got the same the same um, the same voids right so you can't fill each other voids because you got a void there too and so you have to figure out Yo, this is where I'm strong at. This is where she's strong at. I think we can compliment each other. She can compliment me. And as she's complimenting me, I'm becoming a better man for her, a better covering for her. And so, boom. So that's how you start building, right? That's what it means, amen, to be masculine, amen. Allow her, allow her to do her role, amen, in supporting you and helping to build you up. And the way you do that is two ways actually one you move in your purpose and then two you're vulnerable with where your deficits are you're self-aware enough and then you're literally man enough to admit where your deficits are and if she's the right one she won't she won't beat you up behind that she'll come alongside you and support you in that amen so that you can become strong in those places where you're weak and then you can do the same for her because you help her to fulfill her purpose by allowing her to help you fulfill yours so genesis chapter 3 now the serpent was more crafty subtle skilled in the sea than any living creature of the field which the lord god had made and the serpent satan said to the woman can it really be that god said you shall not eat from any tree of the garden and the woman said to the serpent, we may, 
eat fruit from the trees of the garden except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden God said you shall not eat from it nor touch it otherwise you will die now what's interesting about this passage and I can't spend a whole lot of time here my time is running short I'm trying to keep these to 25 minutes max but it's interesting that the serpent or Satan came and spoke to the woman spoke to the woman why did Satan go to Adam Maybe Satan went to Adam and Adam was like, no. Or Satan knew that, well, I know God and Adam have a tight relationship, but this relationship between Adam and the woman, maybe their relationship isn't as strong as the one is between God and Adam. I don't know, but there's a reason, amen. There's a reason, and I think it's because um, he knew that there was more distance between the woman and God than there was between the man and God because of how the authoritative family structure is you have this uh, you have this structure where it's God man woman children family God man woman children totality family and so um, if the woman though is uncovered, I think I'm getting I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me just let me just back let me just backtrack. But we're gonna see what happens when the woman steps from under the covering that the man that the man provides. So um, another thing that we see here is that we don't have one record where God told the woman anything. If we go back and look at the verses that we read, God told the man. God said, and I'm. I'm paraphrasing here. God said, hey, you could eat of all these trees, but not this one. This one is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if you eat from this tree, you're going to die. You're going to die. You, you, you're going to die not because of the fruit, but you're going to die because of uh, you've taken your will and willfully disobeyed me. Right? You've distanced yourself from me by doing something contrary to what I have instructed you to do. And design you to do right I have designed you to be in relationship with me uh, yet you have to choose in order for love to be real it has to be a choice and so you have to choose to love me through obedience and when you disobey me you separate from me. you have chose disobedience so you have separated yourself from me which is in essence death and the further you go being separated from me the more and more you die right and so um, but when the serpent approached the woman, not the man, the serpent approached the woman. And then in verse 2, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden except uh, the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God said, you shall not eat from it nor touch it, otherwise you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. For God knows that in the day, oh, I'm sorry, but for God knows that on the day, uh, you eat from it, your eyes will be open. That is, you will have greater awareness and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. One of the main reasons why God told Adam not to eat the fruit of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil is because God had only intended, excuse me, because God had only intended for them to experience good and not evil. Good and not evil. And look at this, verse 6. Going somewhere with this, y'all. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delightful to look at and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave a son to her husband with her and he ate. Now, look at this. And when the woman saw, now, first of all, look. It wasn't like Eve took a look at the fruit and was like, and had arrived at all of these conclusions in one instant. She had to look and long after that and study it and examine it because look at, look at, look, look, look at everything that uh, happened. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, so I have to study and see, okay, well, yep, this is edible and delightful to look at. It means just staring, you're longing, you're sizing that thing up. Oh, this makes me feel good when I see it and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful. Wow, you mean I can have wisdom and insight that I don't have right now? 
she took some of its fruit and ate it and she also gave some to her husband with her and he ate now this is important because a lot of times we think that adam was right there personally i don't believe that adam was was right there when this conversation took took, took place i believe eve was apart from was apart from adam and when it says that uh, she took and ate she took ate and noticed that i'm still alive i'm still here i'm not dead i'm i'm i i I, I didn't die. I'm in the same condition and position I was before I took a bite of this. And so, and it has all of these, all of these features, right? It's good. It gives me insight. It's, 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 um, it's very uh, beautiful to look at. And so I'm going to take and give this to Adam. And now Adam, Adam ate of the fruit. And I don't believe that Adam didn't know, but I believe that Eve came back and told Adam that, yo, I ate of this fruit and this is what I, 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 this fruit I got from, from uh, the tree and, and um, the knowledge of good and evil and you can eat it and you can live. Look, I'm still alive. I've, I've eaten from this. And again, I'm just sharing what I perceive, what I perceive. And so at this point, why, why this is important, why I'm even bringing this up, is this at this point when he took and ate, he decided, he decided to listen to the woman and heed what the woman said over listening to God and heeding what God says. Because it was only then the eyes of the two of them were open. So when Eve took and 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 ate, you don't see God on the scene. You don't hear God saying anything. It's just she took and she ate. Adam was supposed to deal with that because the woman was under his authority. God brought the woman to Adam, and God didn't name the woman. God named man and named man Adam, but God didn't name the woman. God brought this creation to Adam and let Adam name it. And when Adam, when you are allowed to name that thing, that means you have authority over that thing. I'm not saying that the woman is just a thing, but I'm just explaining to, to so that we have this visual picture of authority and the family hierarchy, the way that it, the way that it goes, and it's and it's in terms of covering. So you, our role as men is to make sure that we're hearing from God and being led by God. Amen. And where anyone, but especially the woman, where there might be a conflict or a seemingly contradiction, where something like that may, may take place, where the woman is saying something contrary to what God has said, we default to what God has said. We default to what God has said. We're, 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 we're not responsible for obeying the woman. We're responsible for obeying God. And, and our obedience to God as men, amen, and we and we have to take that role very seriously. And our obedience to, to God as men, we oversee, we cover our women. The proper course of action would have been for Adam to be like, yo, what are you doing? We can't eat this. I told you what God said. I told you what God said. And then Adam deals with that. Adam deals with that. But now because Adam yielded and Adam chose to again come from out of his role as being as being not only a man but the man come out of his masculine role and submit to the will of his wife as a result contrary to what God has said and as a result you have the fall so let's take a look at um, at verse 8 at verse 8 and then the eyes of the two of them were open that is their awareness increased and they knew that they were naked and they fastened fig leaves together and made themselves coverings and they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool afternoon breeze of the day so the man and his wife hid and kept themselves hidden from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden but the Lord called Adam and said to him where are you he said, I heard the sound of you walking in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Now, you know what? We're actually going to wrap there for the part of Genesis. 
but this is what I want to bring out is that as as men God approached Adam God called for Adam he didn't call for Adam and the woman he called for Adam and he said where are you you see when we don't embrace our role as the masculine we're out of place we're out of place and so our role amen our responsibility the condition of our family the condition of our community is tied to us embracing our masculine position there are many things that want to undo that the reason Satan went to or the serpent went to uh, Satan through the serpent went to the woman and not the man because Satan understands the power that men have he understands that men amen are created in the image and likeness of God directly the woman is indirectly created in the image and likeness of God because the woman was created a man out of the man so the responsibility amen we can't continue to allow as as men continue to allow masculinity genuine masculinity the masculine to be corrupted amen and I'm not talking about, you know, this abusive, you know, where the uh, masculine is, you know, I'm going to make this woman do this. I'm going to make her. I'm going to, it's like, no, you can't do that. That's not being masculine. That's being a bully. Uh, this woman, she, you know, you complain that, man, this is the woman that you, you, you accepted her. You accepted her as uh, your wife. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go around complaining. Just, uh, uh, you better go to God. Go to God and ask for help and wisdom and how to deal with her. And now there are some cases and some some situations where, you, you know, yeah, y'all don't need to be together. Y'all don't need to be together. But that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to look at it and see, okay, how she's reacting to you. Well, how are you reacting to God? How she's behaving as far as you're concerned. How are you behaving as far as God's concerned? Because that's oftentimes the connection that there's there's a a correlation is what they call it in the social sciences where there's a positive correlation of the more I submit to and obey God the better my relationship is with my wife amen being masculine y'all is taking responsibility being masculine is not taking advantage thank you Holy Spirit being masculine is not making her get up and earn all the money and you spending all all the money you you staying home you got these uh, these bright uh, bright ideas on investing and yet you're not doing anything to bring in any money to invest she's going out she's working hard she's taking care of the needs of, of the children she's taking care of the needs of the household and you staying at home playing video games you staying at home eating up all the kids' food, eating up all of the cereal. You know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and want to tell her, you know, and then got the nerve to know a little bit about the Bible and say, woman, submit. And she has the responsibility to submit to you. She 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 has that responsibility to submit to you to, to you. But you also you have the greater responsibility of submitting to God. Because as the man what is really masculine amen this is why this word submission we, we we we've been we've been mistaught on its importance we've been we we have not been properly educated on the power of submission the power of submission first of all to submit takes power you have to you have to have enough control over your own will to take it and submit it to the will of another 
And so when we as men, when we flex, when we when we take our will, when we flex, amen, strength control over ourselves and we submit that to God, that's powerful. And in doing that, amen, we are rightfully aligned with God so we can experience the fullness, amen, of life that God has for us. And part of that fullness in the family structure is that is that we experience, amen, a submitted wife. Because we have sown submission in our obedience. We can go to God, amen, and expect submission, amen, and expect to reap submission in our role as men, amen. Don't apologize for that. Don't let society tell you that that's passe. Don't let society blur the, li uh, blur, rather, blur the lines between masculine and feminine. There are clear distinctions. There are two very different things, two very different beings, yet the same at the same time. <laughs> Amen. They are two uh, men and women, uh, men and women rather, or man, the man and the woman are very, are likely very different. <laughs> they are likely very different. And that's beautiful. That's the counterpart. Amen. That's the compliment. Amen. But if you want to be a real man and you want to show what it really means to be masculine, then you got to submit to God. Because then that's when you can start to move in your purpose and the true essence, amen, and realness, amen, in the masculine. It's submission. Submission to God. Obedience to God's word. Allowing God to love others through you. And that love, amen, I'm telling y'all, that, that love manifests in many, many different ways. It's not always touchy-feely. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's violent. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, physical uh, physical abuse. Uh, physical abuse. Um, uh, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm beating you because I love you. No, that is that is domestic violence. And that is, that is, that is not what it means to be a man is not what it means to be masculine that is abuse um but i'm talking about violently when your will wants to do something that's contrary to the will and the word of god and you have to literally kill your will in order to make yourself submit to the will of god that's violent or in times where you have to protect your family whether it be physical violence to protect your family or more more importantly violent in the spirit and the praying and the fasting amen and the dying to self and the going without those things amen it takes it takes a strong man it takes a you know it takes a passionate passionate man in order to do that but you do that for the good of your family you do that for the good of your household you do that amen for the good of your relationship with your god the most high god amen Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in your mighty matchless name, Lord Jesus, we just come before you, Lord God, and I pray that your word resonates with the listener today. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we uh, as men be unapologetic in our masculinity, true masculinity, as you have defined the masculine, O oh God, not as the world has tried to define it and, and, and undefine it, um, uh, not as Satan has tried to convince and to confuse uh, what it means to be a man, Lord God, but what thus saith the Lord, what do you say, amen, Heavenly Father, about the masculine, for you created us, you created man. So, Lord God, I pray that we would seek you and seek your wisdom and what it means to be a man, and then we would be doers of your word, and we would do that which you have shown us to do. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for each and every person that's watching today. I pray that they come to know you as Lord, Heavenly Father, and I pray that those who know you as Lord, Lord God, continue onward and forward, that they are renewed, Heavenly Father, in their vigor and their passion for you and for the things of you. And it's in your blessed and holy name, Lord Jesus, that I thank you and I pray. Amen.